this lesson, I'm going to show you the second part to the original solo I came up with called Loop Appeal, which I play over the two chord vamp from the Red Hot Chili Peppers song, Aeroplane. We're gonna pick it up in bar 13, which is where I start to climb up the neck and get intense with the bends. And I'm gonna do some neat other kinds of things, some bebop, you know, uh, Michael Brecker, Mike Stern type of things, but all in a rock, screaming rock lead context. So here, let's review the chord changes briefly, and then we'll get on with the solo. Okay, the chord progression again goes G minor seven, C. Playing it around 100 beats per minute, which is one of my favorite tempos for this kind of pocket type of groove. the idea. I'm using fret hand muting, 16th note pendulum strumming to get that kind of funky R&B type of sound. And okay, here is the second half of the solo. I'm going to pick it up right before it ends on the last, on the first part, which is in bar 13, and then I'll continue to the end. Okay, so after that initial uh, Albert King slash Steve Ray Vaughan style bend, I go into this repetition lick. That's over the C chord. And uh, by the way, you know, you got to use that reinforced fingering for that bend. Two, if not three fingers, and then the thumb wrapped around here. And here's a little side note. It's interesting. I've seen a lot of players, uh, rock, blues, metal players, they kind of shy away from doing that move because you're really putting it all out in the line, so to speak. You're exposing your vibrato technique, or lack thereof, for better or worse. Like a singer trying to shake a note, and if it doesn't, if it sounds too fast and billy goat-like, it's embarrassing. So a lot of guys will go, or go, Which is cool, those are great licks, you know, but when you go To me, that's, that's the king of all vibratos, you know. Getting it up to pitch. And then kind of releasing it partially, like maybe a quarter tone. And that kind of gives me energy, gives me adrenaline. I'm like, yeah, because then I, I want to go on to do some more cool licks. And then I go Okay, that's um like a Leonard Skinner Freebird style lick, right? <laughs> okay, that's the index finger bend. It's funny, usually you see people grimace when they do that because it hurts. It's like they're in pain, like, ow! Then a little quarter step bend. Now here's where I go into this kind of um, what I call power bebop type of line, like Mike Stern, Michael Brecker inspired. I start outlining the changes. This is getting back to what we've covered in previous lessons. Okay, over C, you can really hear chromatic passing tones. And then instead of just going, I'm going. That's kind of implying this kind of chord. Wow, C, 13, sharp 11. And, you know, implying the C Lydian dominant mode, which would be. And then a chromatic passing tone. Now, now it's a downbeat of bar 17. Back to G minor seven, and here we're going.
that's kind of a neat. I'm thinking John Coltrane there. Ba ba do 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 ba. But that is that's a B flat major seven arpeggio. But played over G. Ah, I get that cool G minor nine sound. And then here's a, a wide stretch thing. I guess that's D minor seven over G. Gives you that kind of G9 sus4 sound. So. I was gonna go to D here. But I think I thought it was kind of cool to hit the C a 16th note before the chord change, you know, is to kind of create anticipation. Now, um, chromatic passing tones, lower neighbors, targeting chord tones, you know, I'm going for the third of C here, but I'm actually hitting the minor third, or you could consider it the sharp second or sharp nine. And again, chromatic walk up. And that's a, a nice little welcome pause, you know, because it lets you take in what you just heard, this big long lick, kind of process it mentally, digest it. And for me, it's almost like catching my breath as if I was a horn player. You know, I even go, shake it out for a second, right? <laughs> take advantage of that little thing. So I go. And then that just kind of inspired a, another Leonard Skinner or Government Mule, Warren Haynes style. We're doing this repetition lick. So I'm using pick and finger, chicken picking, or hybrid picking, whatever you want to call it, plucking the B string with my middle finger, pulling off, and then down stroking the G string. And then it goes back to G minor seven. I go, you know, bring it into G minor pentatonic again. I kind of changed the fingering there. I use ring, index, middle. I mean, you could keep the pinky, because on the C I'm going, pinky, index, middle. Where you can go. I don't know, either one is challenging, right? So you just pick one that works for you. And then we go. Kind of acknowledging the C chord. And then a little series of sweeps here, beginning at the end of bar 22. Okay, so I pick the F, hammer on to G, and then that's a G minor seven arpeggio. If you recall, a minor seven arpeggio lives within the Dorian mode. So if this is a G Dorian mode, it lives within it. It's like every other note. We covered this in an earlier lesson by going from G minor seven, then over C, I'm switching, dropping that note down to E. That's neat. That gives you a C9 type of sound. What that really is, is an E minor seven flat five arpeggio. And then, the grand finale in bar 25, I do this series of 16th note triplet licks. That's, uh, again, a B flat major seven arpeggio. If you look at B flat as a root. But played over G minor, it gives you that, that nice G minor nine sound, right? And then I just go up to C. I was gonna go for, that's hard, you know, cause you gotta shift back. That would be harmonically correct thing to do because um, if you're gonna play a C chord in this key, G Dorian, it would be C7. G minor seven to C7. So you go, but 
However, when you play something fast, that isn't quite as important. And you can even rationalize it by saying that this is the chromatic lower neighbor. Remember chromatic neighbors? So it's just easier to execute. So I go. You know, because reaching back is a kind of a bitch. But if you can do it, you know, fine. And then I climb up higher because I'm thinking, you know, start low, end the solo high. And then I go. Okay, that's a D minor 7 arpeggio, right? If you think of it as D being the root. Played over a G root, though, it gives you a nice G minor 9. G minor, um, sorry, G9 sus4 sound. And then that's over C7. Again, E minor 7 flat 5. It's um, kind of what we did earlier, you know. Um, getting a G9 sus4 sound to a C9 sound. The fingering here is pinky, index, middle, I'm sorry, middle, index, yeah. And then I switch to the ring. Ring, index, middle, index. And then a nice big bend on G, F up to G. Again, reinforced fingering, ring finger at the 18th fret, supported by the middle finger. Big shake. That last part again. And that's where we end it. Of course, you can keep trying to go as high as you can go, and then just, you know, eventually you gotta end the solo, but I figured that was a good place to end it. The screaming bend up to the root. <laughs>